Hi, I'm Jim Forsyth with The Conversation Continues. Joining us from the San Antonio Express News, columnist Elaine Ayala and senior reporter Josh Baugh. Elaine, you are covering the event of the year for sure, and that is immigration and the surge of immigrants from all over the world, 47 countries just in the Del Rio Border Patrol sector alone. Uh, it seems like it's kind of died down lately. I mean, where do we stand with immigration here in San Antonio? I don't think it's died down. I think that um, the protocols are changing. Um, the Trump administration has taken harder and harder lines at the border. Um, just uh, a few days ago, um, it announced that um, migrants can no longer seek asylum at the U.S.-Mexico border, which um, several um, lawyers and others have deemed unconstitutional, unlawful. It is the only border in which this is being played out. Mm -hmm. um, and asylum seeking is an international and national right. Um, what we have started to do uh, a year and a half ago is deny those claims and stop the migration at the Mexican border. So now Mexico is feeling the crunch um, and the same sort of um, feelings that we're seeing across the country of build the wall and um, stop them at the border is being heard in Mexico now. That's the real difference. And that's because they're so st uh, strained for resources and the conditions, however bad they may be in detention centers in the U.S. side of the border, they're far greater in the camps where so many are being held in the Mexico, stay in Mexico policy. So um, what looks like the hardest fight going forward is that of um, reinstituting the, the right um, to seek asylum in the United States. And I would bet that our courts are going to be very busy. Now, uh, there's been a lot of criticism. You mentioned the detention centers. We had the vice president just this week visiting the detention center in McAllen. What alternatives do the critics of the conditions that the detention centers have to deal with the situation? Well, I think that critics have said all along that even with um, uh, greater numbers of asylum seekers, the best way, even the cheapest way, is to get them processed. There is an understood process to, seek, to seeking asylum. That doesn't mean all of them will get asylum. Um, you have a process that uh, vets them over and over again, even before they um, arrive at the U.S.-Mexican border. And then some will indeed be um, deported and some will be allowed in some of them with ankle bracelets bracelets and all of them with a court date in which they have to show up and make their case i've been to local immigration courts where families are showing up over and over again to check in with the judge to say their asylum cases are still in the process mm -hmm. and uh, what so many of them have going for them is that they can prove that um, they're victims of violence um, and that um, gangs have been after their children as well as them, that they've been extorted if they were business people, and, um, and they'll be able to prove, and then they will be should be allowed in. That is the process that has always been true and has worked. In fact, I've seen asylum seekers not only say, oh, my family's in Detroit, my family's mm. in Michigan, and they go straight there. That's why San Antonio is just a stopping ground on their way to where their families are. Now, some of the West um, Africans that have been through San Antonio don't all have sponsors, but Americans across the country that are very generous, as churches especially, have taken them on and say, bring them, send them to us. They've even helped provide for transportation. And what I found so interesting about the West Africans is that they've been en route for a very long mm -hmm. time. Um, the, the charges of Ebola were ridiculous because they've been in the Americas, some of them for years, mm -hmm. and they've slowly made their way here. And a lot of them are professionals. Um, they speak primarily Portuguese and French, which is why the city wanted mm -hmm. French speakers at the, at the resource center. Uh, but they are on their way. They're, um, they're so, so thrilled to be in the United mm -hmm. States finally which was always their destination. And they are definitely 
um, have very valid claims to asylum. Josh, it's kind of hot conditions out there for those asylum seekers and the immigrants at the detention centers. You cover the environment for the San Antonio Express News. We have an alarming report from the uh, uh, concerned scientists that it's going to get a lot hotter. Talk a little bit about what's in our future uh, as far as climate change is concerned. So the Union of uh, Concerned Scientists put out a report called Killer Heat, came out <laughs> earlier this week. Uh, and it's a pretty alarming report, but it, it, it tells us what many other reports have already told us, which is that our future uh, is going to be a lot hotter. And, and I should state that, that that's the case uh, regardless of whether we take quick action on climate change or we do nothing at all, it is still going to get hotter based on the speculation from this report. Uh, this is a peer-reviewed study. Uh, it, it has just an unfathomable amount of detail. Uh, if, you, if you go and pull the report off their website, you, uh, you have access to uh, databases that show all these predictions of, of heat uh, in, in cities across the U.S., every single county, every single state in the continental U.S., uh, has all been studied uh, in this report. So between 1971 and 2000, this report says that we had 29 days on average above 100 degrees annually uh, and five days above 105. Uh, the report predicts that uh, by mid-century, if we do nothing on climate change, the status quo remains and carbon emissions continue to grow, uh, we'll have 97 days annually that are over 100 degrees on the heat index and 133 days uh, over 100 by late century. So the heat index is a combination of, of the ambient temperature and the relative humidity, and it determines what the feels like temperature is. And so what this is telling us is that, um, you know, by mid-century and by late century, uh, 21st century, we're looking at uh, three to five months, uh, a year of 100 plus degree uh, heat index readings. And you say that some of us, some of this is even if we do nothing? Uh, if we do nothing, it's, it's, it's uh, the, the 97 days and 133 days uh, by the end of the century. If we take action, those days can be reduced somewhat, uh, 59 days by mid-century over 100 degrees on the heat index and 103 days by late century if we take quick action. If, if, if globally we work and try to meet the, uh, the, the goals of the Paris Cl Climate Accord, uh, minimizing the increase of, of uh, average temperature to uh, pre-industrial levels. Uh, it'll still get, we'll still have more warm days, but it won't be as extreme as if we do nothing. It's gonna get hotter, no doubt about that. Josh Baugh is a, a senior reporter from the San Antonio Express News. Elena Ayala, columnist for the San Antonio Express News. Thank you both for joining us today on The Conversation Continues.